All right, what's going on? You want to learn how to record MIDI inside Traction Waveform. This is Waveform 13, the free version. So stay tuned in this tutorial. I'm gonna show you a few different methods that I like to use as far as recording MIDI or just editing MIDI in general. Let's get it. All right, so the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna create a project. Now I already created one called MIDI Tutorial Edit One. So I'm gonna click on that, open it up. And here I'm going to go to file. Let's switch me over so you can see a little better. We'll go to file. We're going to go to import an audio or MIDI file. And I'm going to look for in this folder I have, this is my H drive, All right? You can find, if you have MIDI songs saved already, then you can do that. But if you don't have any, you can create some or even download some. All right. I'm going to do this. He's my savior. See this eight kilobytes, this one might not have much on it, but let's press open and let's press import, All right? And you're gonna get this asterisk here that you may see and it's okay because this asterisk is just letting you know that this is set up as a MIDI track, but there is no instruments associated with it. So we can see that I have tenor sax, I have trumpet, trombone, string ensemble, acoustic piano, electric bass, vibraphone, and drums, all right? Now, temporarily, I'm just going to uh, assign some instruments to this. So I'm gonna click on plus sign here. Okay, and we're gonna go down to, let's do the Steven Slate, and let's do the SSD Sampler 5, all right? And go back up to create, let's load the, dry and tight kit okay so here if we see if we got anything now i'm going to solo this track okay so we do have something that kind of awfully soft though and it might be this I might have to turn the velocity up on these let's try another one Okay, and if I didn't like the way the velocity was, I can actually bring it up here and see, let's see, like the bass drum, I mean, not the bass drum, let's look at the bass drum right here. Okay. Let's see what I just did. Okay, I did make the bass drum a lot louder. up to zero okay good now we have that I can go ahead and press control s to save that do bass and let's just do the uh that's our bass guitar this is from cakewalk let's see what bass man sounds like Okay, so I notice there's some octave issues right here because um, I'm using a lower octave bass originally. So let's see if I can pitch this up. I'm gonna right click on it and see if this is what I'm looking for, but maybe it's not. All right, let's left click on it and then make sure we have that selected. So that track is select, I can press transpose and I wanna transpose it up an octave, okay? Which is gonna be up one octave. All right, and I did transpose it, so let's hear that now. Okay, and all right, this is an old song. You all wrote this song 
when I was probably 15 years old, 16 years old, something like that. So it's a song that I never put out before. Um, but yeah, I mean, intentionally I was trying to put it out and I still will put it out eventually one day uh, once I finish it. Um, originally when I recorded it, I kind of worked with this a little bit and I was using a four track task game or eight, I think an eight track task game at that time to try to record like some vocals on. I remember recording vocals to a long time ago, but, um, of course that stuff, you know, I can't pull any of that up. So it's, it's gone. So. All right, uh, we have the piano, and I mean, this is, you know, this might be a little tedious project, but this is a good way, too, as well, if you have a song that you actually put out, but you didn't like the way the instruments were, you can always come back in here and change stuff. So that's one thing I actually want to do for one of the songs that I did release already. got that and let's go to string ensemble So that's one way to go about, you know, importing the song in, taking the MIDI and then, you know, transferring or not transferring, but applying your sounds to it to make it sound better. Uh, another thing that you can do is, you know, actually importing. We're well, not importing, but actually creating a track and then adding a MIDI clip or a step clip. So a MIDI clip works like this. You right click, click insert new MIDI clip. Right, and it does make it very small. So let's drag it over and then let's stretch it out some. You, if you continue to scroll with your mouse, you'll see it zoom in or zoom out, and then you can stretch it out. And let's say I want eight bars. It opens up the piano roll, and here on the piano roll, you can, you know add some notes in let's get something going let's bring up the four oscillator down at the bottom you're going to see like a toolbar velocity controllers you're going to see you know this is the select you're going to see the right draw you know draw and moves notes and controllers you got the eraser you have a draw line if you want to draw one straight line or a controller and you can do a paint or a toggle, it just says toggle notes on off to create melodies, and then you can review all the notes at the current time, okay? And then you can change the color of them, you can change the velocity, you can change how, you know, you can change a bunch of different things on here, but let's just start with um, writing something. So let's say, yeah, and I think what this does is allow you to put, um, like these are really basically like 16th notes right now that I'm putting in. Okay, cool. That's all right. At least I think it's 16 notes. It's supposed to be a fourth of a beat, which is a 16 note. Uh, but I guess it depends on what tempo you're at. So let me see if I turn my metronome on. Okay, cool. All right, I like all of that, and that was hot, you know, too. All right, I might mess around and make a groove with that. Now, me personally, I prefer to play things in. Some people are just experts at being able to go in here and write stuff out. Now, if I do that, I would rather use notation, uh, which you can do on here, too, as well. But, I, like, I don't really care for uh, doing it this way. Okay, let's put some right here. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then we should be able to just keep duplicate. Well, not duplicating it right there, but let's control Z. We should be able to um, copy that. Oops, I didn't mean to move it. Let's drag, copy. 
and let's click right here paste it and i realize i'm not showing you the whole entire thing my bad okay cool and and that can be it and then i might want to add um now i'm going to add another track but i'm going to do this time i'm going to add a step clip and put it right here stretch it all out and let's put it right here okay then this we can drag in because we don't really need it all right and i'm going to add some drums to this let's go back up use our favorite kit micro drum sampler all right and then we're going to go add some more things let's see no we ain't gonna do no trap kit okay now so we can do that and now so on this you can actually just click on them and they're subdivided sub you know subdivision means that if i give you one beat you can divide it however many ways you want to divide it and so right now they're divided into fourths right yeah so i know that because i can see bar one and i see this 240 right here this 240 lets me know that this is all 16 notes 244 87 20. that's how they're divided the ticks basically are divided that way so that means if i want to put a bass drum here so i can go one two three four one and two and three and four and one and two i think i have eighth notes here one and a two and a one and two so i can go one and two and three and i can put this on the down beats let's try that now what you notice is that because this pattern is only i don't know how long is this pattern okay so yeah however long this pattern is like this first bar uh what i love about this is that once you put it in you don't have to change anything like it's going to just automatically copy it for the life of the track uh but you could add separate variations and show you what i mean by that the separate variations so at the bottom they have these variations where you can click plus sign and do variation one uh but you can also click it and do a new variation so i can say new variation so I, I click on it right here or you can right click on it and do new variation okay and then i can do let's change it to uh instead of doing the bass drum here let's do so i can go one two three four one e and e and so let's take it off here e and two so let's try that three four okay but then you know let's keep the bass drum on one there too as well okay and then uh that works but maybe i did not like this one right here then let's try that okay or i just say you know what i'm good i just i'll keep it the same and so in that case you could just use variation one and then just keep it going like that and that would be good and this is how i would go about it. now this is like really easy to set up because you can easily program your song to be the way you really want it to be all right uh this doesn't really touch you know as many things as you can do because you can change the velocity you can change you know the midi messages you can add different things in there to make it sound even better you can change the humanization of it to make it sound more realistic uh for its quantizing you can quantize it or you can like make it swing you can do a bunch of different things with this now this is just kind of really just really getting into it it's one of those things like if you come up with an idea of something that you really want to try to do then that's when you do more experimentation but for me for the most part you know i'm used to just being able to play the stuff out it's an octave it oh actually shoot let me record that hold on let's mute that mute all of this let's create a new track let's create a new track let me find out what this uh, uh 
do. Hold on, what where my tempo at again? Too fast, too fast, too fast. All right, let's change this tempo BPM. We can click here at the bottom and let's go to 87. Let's try that. Dad, did that change? Don't look like a change. Okay, let's here we go. Yeah, now I remember what I played though. Okay, where we at? Oh, okay, let's copy this down here. Gonna hold control, drag it down here. All right, and yeah. Okay, so we can record this. So this is just recorded mini. Make sure the track is enabled. And then uh, if you need to count off, cool. If not, just hit it. Hit it as soon as it goes. All right, I like that. Yeah, that's hot. I like it. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. It might be a groove that I work off of later on. I don't know. But anyway, you got it. You got it. You know what you're doing, right? You know what you're doing. You. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah, you figured it out. Good. Good job. We figured this thing out. I know it's been like one of those longer videos, but it's okay. You know, you're in here and you're enjoying Waveform and I'm learning and I'm making mistakes. It's all about making mistakes and figuring out how to correct those mistakes. If you are new to the channel, this is Waveform Explored. I'm Justin Norm. And hey, what should I do next? Do you have more questions about MIDI? Another option for being able to record inside here is using the controller. And if you're not sure how to set up your controller, I have a video that will pop up next. Click on it so that way you can set up your controller so that way you can get to recording inside Traction Waveform. All right, you all, peace.